And you guys have this great tradition that a woman can propose to a man on the 29th of February in a leap year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why not? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, woo. <laughs> woo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Real Ripe and Real Rotten. This is a podcast where we're going through the highs and lows of your favorite Hollywood celebrities. Each month, me and Clay are going to be using Rotten Tomatoes to determine the highest and the lowest rated film in one individual filmography. And right now we're moving on to Amy Adams after we spent a little bit of time with the Best Picture nominees from uh, 2018 or 2019, however you want to look at it. We're going to be moving back into our normal scheduled programming here and we're going to be dealing with Amy Adams and it's her worst film, it is the 23% on Rotten Tomatoes a leap year from 2010. My name is Wes, and I'm joined by Clay. Clay, how are you? I'm good. I watched this great episode of Cheers last night um, where uh, Diane's cat dies and you know they, they have to console her and stuff. And it's, it's good. You know, Coach is really growing on me in that show. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... I'm doing literally anything I can to avoid talking about this movie. <laughs> I think we'll... Um... I, you know, we, we have, you know, um, he died. That's why he left the show. He had a very sudden heart attack and he died in uh, during coach. the third season. Yes. Coach, yeah. coach. Died. Yeah. No, I thought you said not, not Matthew, that. not Matthew. Good. Who is, no, the who is not James Franco, which I didn't know until I, about 10 minutes into this movie, Amy, Amy said the same thing. We were about 20 minutes in and she's like, when is James Franco going to show up? Like, who is this other mm -hmm. guy? And it's like, no, this is, this is the guy. This is Matthew. Good. We're talking about leap year. It's a 2010, um, film from amy adams it is her worst it's at 23 percent on the thermometer i always pronounce it incorrectly but i think that's how you'd say it uh the critical consensus for this one from rotten tomatoes is amy adams is as appealing as ever but her charms aren't enough to keep leap year from succumbing to an overabundance of cliche and an unfunny script um we're going to take a break i'm going to play the trailer so you guys get a taste of this one if you're unfamiliar however i would recommend everyone go out and watch it uh, so we're going to play the do trailer. Not, do not listen to him. <laughs> we're going to watch the trailer and we'll be right back. Get ready to lose your mind. Guess who I saw walking out of the store carrying that little red bag. Oh my God. So this is for you. Okay, hold on. We, we got to work on your surprise face. Ask me, ask me. Will you marry me? <gasps> Bigger eyes? Oh, me? The good news is you have time to practice between now and then. <laughs> They're earrings. Yeah, a little something to keep your ears warm while I'm in Dublin. It is leap year, you know, in Ireland. A woman can propose to a man on the 29th of February. Dad, I'm not going to Dublin. Oh my God! I'm not gonna die without getting engaged! Ladies and gentlemen, we are diverting to Cardiff, Wales. Wales? Hello. I need a taxi to Dublin. I'm your man, missus. I'll drive you to Dublin. Thank you. I'm going to propose to my boyfriend on leap day. Yeah? Yeah. So I thought, woo! Woo! <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Hi, <laughs> Cass. Mm -hmm. Let's move. It comes as a real shock to find out that you speak fluent cow. The girl who's always in control <laughs> will find out what happens. You fried my blackberry. You fried the whole village. When you lose it. No. Whoa. Wait. Stop it. The car. My ride. I've got a room. You two are married, aren't you? It's Mr. and Mrs. Okay, Grady. Then. Lovely. I just can't wait to see you. You can't imagine what I've been through. You can see right through the curtain. Can you? Can you? No peeking. You're young, married, in love. Show us a kiss. <laughs> oh. Dabbing man. Kiss the girl. Now that's a kiss. To say yes. To say there's nothing holding you back. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Anna. Yes. Anna. Let's get into Leap Year, Clay, which yes. um, 
which is Amy which, Adams' worst. We, it's been a while since mm. we've had a really bad movie, I think. I can't remember who the person mm. was that we did before the Best Picture nominees, but, but while Bohemian Rhapsody is not a good movie, I don't think it's on the level of Leap Year, no. really. I think it's a little no. bit better than that. Uh, this is a... You know what this one reminded me of quite a bit? This movie reminded me of Christmas Eve in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, is it is it because of how... Uh... Most of the non-Irish exteriors were just green screens. She's supposed to be from Boston. Yes, they, they never I don't set know. foot in Boston whatsoever. No, yeah, and no. she walks. The only exterior shot of Boston they show is her walking th- th- across the street in a very what looks to be a green screen background. And whatever the background is was just like a building, and then the top of some ships that are sticking up over a bridge. I was, and it does not look like any city I've ever seen in my life. I was I thought the only the only exterior I really remember that wasn't clearly a set was the um there's in the opening sort of montage, she's like outside and they have this Dutch angle on her for some reason yes. looking up at the yeah. sky. Is that the shot you're talking about? I think so. Okay. I think so. Um Leap year. Let me get a little bit into this. It's a 2010 Irish American rom com directed by Anand Tucker and written by Harry Elfont and Deborah Kaplan loosely based on I Know Where I'm Going, and it stars Amy Adams and Matthew Good. The film follows a real estate worker who heads to Ireland to ask her boyfriend to accept her wedding proposal on Leap Day, when tradition supposedly holds that men cannot refuse a woman's proposal for marriage. Her plans are interrupted by a series of events and are further complicated when she hires an Irish innkeeper to take her to her boyfriend in Dublin. I'm going to read um, my favorite piece of criticism of this film from the reception Mm. clay, and then we'll get into it. Uh, Donald Clark of the Irish Times gave the film one star out of five. In a scathing review, he described it as, quote, offensive, reactionary, patronizing filth. <laughs> End <Yep>. quote. <laughs> can, I, can I point something out here right at the beginning? Yeah, go ahead. So we're, <laughs> we're watching the movie. My girlfriend was watching this with me. Uh, not because she enjoyed it, but because she, she likes Amy Adams and she suffered through this with me. And then not to jump too far into this, uh, you know, plot i guess you could call it um but when they got to the end when uh adam scott proposes to her my girlfriend my i I was talking about it afterwards and she goes well you know i thought this was kind of a a garbage movie but at least you know at least he proposed at the end so you know the name of the movie doesn't totally totally uh at least they do what it says in the name of the movie and i was like what are you talking about she's like it's called the proposal or the engagement or something right and it's like no it's called Leap Year. Yeah. And she goes, what? <laughs> I go, yeah. <laughs> they don't even do the thing that the movie is named after. Yeah. Like the entire conceit of the movie, they don't even do it. Never get to it. Never. <laughs> no. Never. She never proposes to her boyfriend. <laughs> like they just completely take that fucking awful catalyst for the story. Yes. And just throw it out the window. Not that it would have made it any better, but at least, you know. I don't know. That's true. I didn't. I didn't even really realize that. I mean, it, it devolves into such cliche by the end of it that maybe I was in such a sort of uh, like a middling state of mind that I didn't even realize it. But it's true that they don't um, stick with the idea. And mm. I don't know. I will say. I will say at the end, we both screamed as though Darth Vader had just told Luke that he was his father when Matthew Good fucking proposes to her at the end. <laughs> <laughs> They've spent a total of like 48 hours together and he's asking her to marry him. We, um, which she's clearly insane. Me, me, this me. is the story of a rich, insane person. <laughs> me and Amy at the end, when uh, Amy Adams walks up to the thing, we're like, please kill yourself. Like, please, yeah. please jump off the cliff and just end it for, uh, for everybody so this movie will be over. Let's, um, I found myself, uh, um, a couple of times wishing this was a different movie, uh, particularly the scene when she starts destroying the um, the, the room that she's rented. I it, half of, my subconscious was like, well, you know, maybe this is the final destination. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, the, she ends up getting killed in some weird Rube Goldberg machine. The other thing was I was kind of hoping it was going to end up like the Wicker Man uh, from the way that she was talking to all these small town Irish people. Yes. Um, I know that Wicker Man is Scottish, but, you know. Same towns, essentially, in these movies. Hilly, hilly villages. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. It's tough to tough to focus myself talking about this thing. Um, well, let's let's pull ourselves together here. Let's talk about yes, let's. why this uh, reminds me of Christmas Eve. Um, mm. Besides the fact that it's based on a holiday, or I guess Leap Year is not really a holiday, but it's kind <laughs> of a holiday. Um, this is like if they made that movie Valentine's Day, 
but the entire thing took place on like March 2nd. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, or it takes place the week before, right? It takes it takes place yeah. in the, the lead up to it. Even better, it's like it's, it's Christmas Eve. It's like if Christmas Eve, that movie Christmas Eve, none of the stories they told took place on Christmas Eve, or <laughs> it just had people making allusions to the fact that Christmas was coming up soon. Yeah, it'd be like the the how Die Hard is a Christmas movie. It would be it would be that. No, kind of- <laughs> no, let's not start that argument because Die Hard is a Christmas movie. This reminds me of Christmas Eve because I feel a hundred percent certain that this movie was some kind of package deal that they made with Amy Adams, where she got mm-hmm. to make some other movie and they were like, we have this garbage script that needs to be made. So please make it. <laughs> um, and I feel the same way about Christmas Eve. When we walked away from Christmas Eve, we were like, why, why was this film made? Like how, how did this happen? And why did they make this movie? Because everyone involved in it is so bizarre and it's clearly mm. just a money grab. Leap Year feels like that to me. It feels like everyone in this movie is sleepwalking through their job about what they're supposed to be doing. They're just showing up and doing what's on the page. And Matthew it, Good literally said he took the role because it would allow him to go home on the weekends. Yes, he he was it was it was shot near where his girlfriend and child were living at the time. So he decided to take it for that. And he said it was not because of the script. He wanted to be clear. <laughs> it was not because of the script. He also said it was probably the worst movie of 2010, which could be true, depending mm. on uh, I don't know what else came in. 2010 was actually the year that we were um in our Oscar podcast, we were talking about what a great year that was, I think, for the yeah. for all the nominations. So maybe it is the worst yeah. year. But um this reminds me also of Christmas Eve in that th- the one thing I'm noticing about the movies that are bad is specifically for the comedies, they all share a similarly bad sense of humor. And yep. what I'm starting to realize is there seems to be one driving factor in what makes a bad sense of humor or something unfunny. And mm. it's when humor is not drawn from the situation, but it feels randomly inserted to make a joke about something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's a staple of all these bad comedies. It's like nothing organically comes out of the situation that's presented. It's just the characters are randomly thrown into things. Like in this one, they're staying at this B&B and she's like, oh, I'll make dinner. And Matthew Good's character for no reason says, I'll make dinner. And, you know, it, the, the comedy comes out of this that they're making dinner and stuff, but there's no reason for them to be doing it. And... A yeah. lot of the jokes and punchlines are similarly set up where they're not they're not artificially drawn from this journey that they're going on. They're just kind of like this event that the screenwriter is like, and now I'll go put a joke in the scene. And this is my joke. And here's the joke. And Leap Year is basically an hour and 40 minutes of that, coupled with some horrendous relationship writing and horrible romantic comedy writing, which we'll get to. But what would you think of the comedy on its uh, on its face? No, I would agree with you. I would go one step further, too, and say that bad comedy like this is generally when you have people writing quote unquote comedic scenes that all they're really doing is kind of um, basing it on previous, previous things, previous scenes, similar scenes that have worked better. So like this feels like a, a romantic comedy where they're not trying to do anything novel or really anything honest. It's just, and you mean in situ- a different movie, not earlier in the movie, they're calling yes, back, like in yeah. a different, yeah. in a different movie. So like this, this seems like a romantic comedy where the, these, the things that they're doing and the jokes they're trying to tell are not honest or, or the, like you're saying, they don't come out of the actual situations or the characters. They are, um, I, I, I hesitate to say archetypal, uh, because, um, that would, make it sound more uh intelligent than it is right. <laughs> but it's it's like it's like uh uh it's kind of like the note card thing that we talk about a lot where it's like on the note card you have this scene and then well traditionally in this kind of scene this thing happens all right so we'll do that so it's like it's a very like movie made by people who are thinking of other movies that did it better that yes. kind of thing yeah um and i'm not saying not that they reference anything in particular um, well, it, it's almost like you just, could say that the script started out as a ger- purely dramatic script and a comedy writer came in and was allowed to insert 10 jokes into the script yeah, without changing yeah. anything. Like he just had to put jokes into it. That's how it feels yeah. to me. There's a uh, uh, Patton Oswalt in, on one of his standups talks about how uh, he was hired to do a uh, punch up on a, some animated comedy years ago. And um, they came to him and they were like, OK, so everything is done here. Like the animation is done. 
So what we need you to do is just write jokes that people will essentially yell from off screen. Mm -hmm. So like it had nothing to do with formulating um, uh, story jokes, organic, natural story jokes. Yeah, it was just shit to throw in from the outside that didn't require doing any other work. And that's how it feels here. It's like, yeah, you've got these situations where people are, well, minus that one fucking weird prelude to a swingers party scene at dinner. (laughs) Which was one of the strangest <laughs> scenes I've ever seen in a movie, Listen, straight up. Me me and Amy laughed at this movie unintentionally. The unintentional yeah. comedy in this movie is pretty strong. We, we did enjoy watching it because of how sort of goofy it is, but nothing is legitimately funny. Although I will say, in the hands of a... The, the reason that dinner kissing scene is so weird is because the, what, the tone that they ended up with is definitely what, not what the movie was going for. And... Yeah. Maybe in a better director's hands who like understood what was funny about that, it would have worked. But as it's st- as it stands in this movie, that scene just comes off as really gross and sort of bizarre that it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's weird because the, the comedy, like you're saying, it's not born from anything natural organic. It's just like wacky things that could happen. And it's like the wedding scene is a good example of that for me. Uh, I would say from that whole wedding sequence. Them bursting in at the beginning is kind of funny, I mm-hmm. guess. Yep. Uh, but then, like everything at the at the reception, where, why, like, the why shoe did they flies stay off. for twelve hours at the wedding? Yeah, they stayed. At, she's trying to get to fucking <laughs> Dublin to get there at a very specific time, yet they stay for the whole wedding. Yes. Not to mention the fact that they walk in and they crash this wedding, and then are invited to stay for the reception. <laughs> Which I haven't, I have not myself planned a wedding, but I know many people who have, and I don't think random people showing up just to sit down and eat your food and drink your liquor at your wedding is something that would be super welcome. Yeah, sitting at the table with everybody else at the wedding and stuff like that. And who did they seat them with? I want to know who they were sitting with. (laughs) Because you don't see what table they're at, but they're clearly at a table. That's pretty much the... And like the the comedy of the the problem with the comedy really stems from from that I think. And the other the problem with this movie is that um, even structurally, I think it sucks. Like the yeah. w- whatever they're trying to do here, we didn't realize. Like you know, they, they pay some sort of lip service to the fact of why he has to go with her. It's because he has to make this like foreclosure yeah. payment or something on his pub, uh, and so he decides to go with her. But which which my girlfriend missed that part. So when I explained that to her later, she was like, are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) He's got to take money out of it for that. And I think that the... Which he didn't even need to do because he just held one fucking fundraiser and apparently covered the entire uh, thing in like a day. So that... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, the the only... The only... uh, The the big takeaway, I think, from it is that it's interesting this is a rom-com because... Yeah. What it does is it is a movie that um the I've never seen a rom-com quite like this where just the sheer fact that the script believes that these people hanging out with each other for like 48 hours they hate each other. Mm. They they yes. despise each other. They're they're, they're up, both assholes. Both assholes. No chemistry. <laughs> and they're both they're told we're told that they're different from each other. I never really get a good sense of their characters, which we'll talk about. But um, mm-hmm. the script believes that two people who hate each other and are totally different from each other will simply fall in love by proximity of being near each other. You, you, just mm-hmm. the fact that you're sort of cl- traveling with somebody means that you are inevitably going to fall in love with them. And, you know, it's the kind of like, guys, lock up your girls if they're going out with some guy for a, like, a, you know, a dinner or something, because you're definitely not getting them back. It's this weird yeah. leap in logic about why they fall in love. I don't understand why these two fall in love. There's no there's no story reason why they fall in love. They have nothing going on outside of the fact that they hang out with each other for a little bit of time. No, I mean, none of the motivations of for anything in this movie have any weight, because I, like if. <laughs> Adam Scott doesn't even do anything shitty until the last five minutes of the movie. And even then it's like debatable, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, she, at that point, she's got this, you know, grand idea of what love is or isn't. Um, and that little kind of douchiness that he, he portrays is enough to get her to 
leave her boyfriend, fly to fucking Ireland, and agree to marry some guy that she just met that right. they, she has li- no chemistry with. Who has not? And, who has not put on a romantic gesture for her? It's not like no, he's contrasting he's himself with Adam Scott, who's doing it out of like a technicality level, like he wants a lower tax yeah. rate or something. It's it's just <laughs> it's just that they had to throw that in to make him unlikable, so that she would go to this guy that she doesn't even know whether or not he's going to accept her at that point. Yeah. I mean, the person with the problem in this movie is her. It's she's, not anybody else. She's terrible. I mean, we, we should focus on her as a character. I think this is a terrible we, Amy Adams performance. A- Amy yeah. Ad- I don't know what Rotten Tomatoes critic consensus is talking about, that she's charming or something. She is a sleepwalking zombie through most of this movie and does not appear to be trying whatsoever to make this a I, character that works. I also couldn't tell if she... I thought she looked particularly pretty. Not to go surface level, but uh, <laughs> I said to my girlfriend, "It's like, does she look particularly pretty in this movie, or does Matthew Good just look like a garbage dump?" And she goes, "No, he just looks like a garbage dump. I've seen her look prettier in other stuff." <laughs> she's she's kind of an underrated actress, you know. Yeah, like, she's great. I like her a lot. She's in, she's been nominated five times for an Academy Award. I think. Wow, she really? has not won. Um, but that's kind of surprising. She's been around for a while. She's been in a bunch of good yeah. movies. This was, I was looking this up. I was like, oh, maybe this is when her career like was just starting going or something and she got involved with it. No, this is middle of her career. Uh, yeah. th- there's, she was, she was Oscar nominated before this movie. So that shot that theory in the foot about like why she would be in this. And I don't know. I think that her character is so boring and bland. And I don't even get the sense that th- she's high strung in the way that the script tells me that she is. Yeah. Like she does not come across as a, high strung weird personality and to pair that and then i'll throw it to you matthew good's character declan does not come across as a weird free spirit character that should break her out of her shell you know like they yeah they, i'm told that they, that those are the two characteristics that define these characters i don't see any evidence for that in the script i don't see any they're both just assholes who are disagreeable with each other he spends the entire movie stalking behind her like a fucking serial killer <laughs> why are there no cars in, in ireland <laughs> I don't know. And like every every scene with them talking is is basically her going, I have to get to Dublin. And then him going, hi to tie to tie to tie. With you know, his, his eating, his, eating a gigantic his, comical sandwich. Yeah. His his <laughs> depiction of an Irish person is just yowza. It's it's something else. Well, Ireland is funny because according to this movie, Ireland is ninety five percent old men. There's no yes. one except old men who are <laughs> Uh, and every scene that Amy Adams goes into a bar feels like a gang rape scene is about to yeah, unfold. They're and- all so tense. <laughs> like the scene where she goes into the, the Matthew Goods bar and then she uses the phone and that one guy's just like standing there. Yep. It's like staring at just her. Just leering, getting some good What the on. hell, man? Like, is that, I don't know. Like, so as far as her character goes too, right? Yeah. Let's go. Let's, I guess we should rein this in, I guess I'm trying to, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll focus on the, the bits first. Let's get through her. Let's get through him. And then we'll get through the, the plot in general. Okay. Well, I was going to say as a larger thing for her character, she's an insane person because why the, the, the thing that was killing me watching this was like, if they had, there's so much um, peripheral, like superstition stuff being talked about. Uh, that never plays into anything that I was like, why? I wish they had just made her a really superstitious person or something, because otherwise I spent the whole movie going, why the fuck does she have to do this? Mm -hmm. Why does she, why does she have to be there for leap year for leap day in order to do there's There's literally nothing that means that says that she has to do this. It's not like she can't do this the next day. There, you know, in it's Boston, not like you mean she can't just go up to Adam Scott and propose in Boston the next yeah, day. Yeah. Or or shit. Let's say she does go to Ireland and they, you know, just to see him. Or if she misses Leap Day, it's not like she's going to get thrown in the fucking lockup because she asks a guy to marry her on well, not Leap Day. Well, the Wikipedia description says right. It's men cannot refuse a proposal. Is that what the movie says? I didn't get that impression. I don't remember. If that's the case, that's even worse. <laughs> It's like an if, anti-Godfather okay, let me, deal. Let me, uh, if that's the case, if the idea is that on Leap Day, if a woman proposes to a man he cannot refuse, that's even worse than what Adam Scott did. Yes. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it's it's equally as corrupt and every, like an unflattering, but why, as a character, why does she care about this? 
You know, if she's yeah, if she's the high strung business focused woman that I think I'm supposed to be inclined to believe that she is. I I don't know if it's a bit. I don't think she's high strung business focused. I think she's closer to like Patrick Bateman. I think she's like high strung like um uh what's the word I'm looking sociopathic? for sociopathic yeah. Like like uh, uh, society based. Okay. Like she's she's worried about her place and there's a word here that I'm just not not getting. I'm sure everyone else is. Screaming you mean she's, out. she's you know worried I mean? about her standing and status of society. Yeah, her social status. Okay. There we go. Yeah. I think she's more worried about that than she is about anything else because I mean she she's she uh, he Adam Scott buys her a beautiful set of diamond fucking earrings and she looks at it like he just crapped in her fucking face. <laughs> Um, well, he's a cardiologist. Her, he's got big bucks. He could, he's yeah, got to go. A little thankfully, bit John Lithgow shows up for a hot second <laughs> to tell her about a, a legend in Ireland. <laughs> John um, Lithgow is like, "How much screen time do I have? Seventeen seconds. Let me act the fuck out of these seventeen yeah. seconds." It reminds me of a of a, of a performance. Uh, shit, what the hell was that movie? Um, you remember that movie from years ago where uh, Ben Stiller and Jack Black were like buddies, and then one of them invents this chemical that makes dog poo disappear. Yes, I do. And I they, don't remember the name, like though. This, yeah, I forget what it's called. But Christopher Walken shows up for about the same amount of time as John Lithgow. Right, yeah. In about the same kind of role, and he fucking kills it. I mean, it's like peak. If you want to see Christopher Walken with with the leash off, watch <laughs> that movie, because he's fantastic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, the, John Lithgow's there for some reason. Um, but her entire thing, like, she, the, the only reason she's pissed off about this is because, like, D from It's Always Sunny is like, oh, you're getting married. And then she doesn't. Right. And she wrong. has like a mental breakdown. Like Adam Scott isn't like, isn't actively doing anything negative to her. And even when she gets to Ireland, like my girlfriend was like, oh, it's going to turn out he's cheating on her or something. Right. And I was like, yeah, you would think so. Mm-hmm. No, he's totally happy that she's there. Yes. <laughs> he's looking forward to seeing her. Well, I guess the. I guess the social status thing does tie in because by the end, the th- the thing that really clues her in is when the fire alarm goes off and he's like, right. they've been talking about what would the right. thing that you would take. And he's like, where's my iPad? I need my iPad before, we, before yeah. we leave the building. And she, I don't know what he's supposed to take and what she's supposed to take, but it doesn't line up with, he doesn't pick up his clattering or whatever. Um, yeah. Or he doesn't lift her and carry her out. Or right. Something. But I, I, I would like, I don't think her character is portrayed as particularly, um, in comparison to Adam Scott, she's not portrayed as like the emotional one where he is super materialistic or anything. Like no. they they don't really no character in this movie is defined, I I think, at all. Like, and I think that's yeah. probably a problem as to why they can't get comedy out of the characters, because neither her, Matthew Good, nor Adam Scott really feel like they have a point of view of what's right. going on. They're just inserted yeah. into this plot and then forced by the the plot narrative and like the plot points that they have to hit, we have some jokes scattered between them because what, what's your opinion of Matthew Good's Declan? I, I don't know what to say about him oh, either. Geez. He, he doesn't yeah. seem like a free spirit. He just seems kind of like this Irish bum guy who seems to, um, for some reason, be able to determine that a van is a bad van as opposed to a good van yes. and that they yeah. can't get into. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, he's, he's just completely empty. I mean, his, his entire thing is that he's, he hates specifically Dublin and I guess the concept of love mm. because his wife or girlfriend left him for his best friend or something. Yes, very and Walter then, White from Breaking Bad situation. He's stuck in with the shitty bar, yeah. Yeah, and it's like he's only going with her for this money. We don't learn about then, the relationship until the very end of the movie, though, either. No, they don't talk. Like He never hint about it until the end. And even at the end, I don't know, man. Like, they... He his he's just a prick to her the entire time, and the, it, 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 but he starts being won over because she is also a prick back to him. Mm. And I guess that's sort of like how that's kind of what I mean. Where like that's the that's the perceived notion of how romantic comedies work, where you've got two people who are butting heads, and then you know they end up butting butts. If you know what I mean? Yes, bumping uglies. Uh, <laughs> I know how sex works. <laughs> um. But 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 here there's nothing there's nothing bridging that gap. It's not like they are. It's not like, not to bring up Cheers, but it's not a Sam and Diane situation where you it, they clearly are both developing feelings for each other. Yeah, and that the shittiness is then covering up that stuff. They're just shitty to each other. Well, and usually, then Good, usually they they the characters have a trait that one has a trait the other one lacks. So it right. complements them when they're together and they learn like how to 
you know, they learned about themselves and they learned about their weaknesses and they learned about like what's important about this other person and stuff like that. It doesn't yeah. happen here. These these two no. people don't complement each other. No, he uh, she he doesn't learn anything from her and she does not learn anything from him. Right. They just that it's like it's the it's the equivalent of yeah what you're talking about like oh, don't let your don't don't let your girlfriend go on vacation by herself because she's gonna hook up with some you know exotic person <laughs> right. you know yeah and and never come back it's the uh, uh um and it's it's pretty insulting uh to everybody involved yeah and she the, I kind of I was kind of hoping at the end of the movie when she shows up back at the place he would be like are you fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we met each other for like, I'm doing great right now. Personally, I've got a bustling business. That's going awesome. Yeah. The bar for uh, some reason has taken off in the, in the, the interim of the, the, the time that she's left. Yeah. Yeah. Like there, it's just such a surface level move for her. Cause it, you know, it's like, uh, I, I really want to relate this to a, 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 a real life story, but, I'm not going to. It doesn't involve me. It involves a member of my family, uh, but I, I'm not going to because I don't know who listens to these things. Well, what, um, what but if, you know, it, oh, she she just straight up leaves her f- fucking uh, uh, fiance because another guy batted his eyes at her. I guess that's not that doesn't come off. Yeah. No, he didn't. Yeah, I guess he didn't even really do that. Yeah, except for that one scene where <laughs> he's on the bus stop. No, no. Uh, <laughs> that was actually the one thing I actually thought worked. I thought the bus fake was good. I thought that worked well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the scene where they're in bed together and they neither one of them can sleep, and by my girlfriend, and they're like fidgeting really weird and like trying not to look at each other. My mm-hmm. girlfriend goes, "This just straight up looks like they're both masturbating." <laughs> 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 very gently in the bed as to not disturb it did it did kind of look like that with their the their wishy washy eyes looking at each other yeah i'm you know the thing is even if in the, like the worst rom coms and stuff, you at least have some sort of like catharsis when the characters get together or or yeah. you're like you're like okay, like good for them like they they love each other, love will triumph and whatever, and you don't even have to be super sappy about it, but at least there's some kind of satisfaction to those two getting together. Mm-hmm really lacking here it's just oh, like yeah, the, big time. the the big that's the big problem with the movie because the comedy can be shit and everything like that and sometimes you can have just like garbage comedy and a rom-com but it's just what these two have going towards each other is just such a mess and so ill-defined that it basically just works into weak plot points that the, we bump and bumble our way along like there's no you know, when he the, she gets into the, uh, she finds the guys that steal her bag at the bar and he goes mm-hmm. in and he's like, give her back her bag. And he, he sort of defends her and fights the guys off. It's like that, that that's not even like an opening into anything. It's just a scene that happens and then they revert back to their normal stance. They go yeah. and hang out at the B&B with each other, the train ride. And the other thing that makes the plot and comedy funny is that it doesn't play fair with the comedy and the jokes, right? They, the the train scene sticks out to me like this. When they get yeah. there, the guy's like, the train comes in three hours. They're like, okay, yeah. we'll go up this hill that takes 15 minutes to get to the top, and then we'll come down. At the, at the top of the hill, the train comes. Why does yeah. the train come three hours early? Why? Yeah. Why? why and they, they don't mention that. They don't like mention the, it. The, they don't say anything about it. So are we supposed to believe that they've been up there for three hours doing nothing and they just got late coming back? Or like, But that's why I mean. the comedy is not fair because it, right. it it breaks the rules of what the movie has been telling you to that point in order to make a joke. Yeah. And I, I thought a lot of that stuff was, was uh, not being fair is a good way to put it. Um. Like ninety percent of the stuff that happens to her that blocks her from getting to her goal is not not fair, and I'm not talking about like oh it's so unfair for that to happen to the characters. Like no, you're just not you're not playing by the rules here, and also it's not stuff that she actively has a hand in. It's all like hand of God type stuff. Yes, uh, where apparently it seems like. The weather is the the worst thing that can happen to you in, in Ireland, and will just completely destroy all of your travel plans. There's no cars; um, you have to walk, and if you're getting hit by hail, this, they should have died in that hailstorm. By the way, if yeah. they, if- not to mention a hailstorm <laughs> that stops and and turns into a beautiful sunny day. Yes, in time for the second half of that wedding scene. <laughs> Like the only reason that wedding scene happens is because of the hailstorm, and then this, it's gone. It, like that's the thing I'm talking about. It's like it's very hand of God type stuff. The train coming 
train coming too early. Uh, if anything, that should be a point against the guy because the guy's like, come on, we get plenty of time. Let's go walk up to this castle. That's only going to take 15 minutes, but looks like it's like two miles away. Yes. That's a good point. Um, they should have built off of that and been like, she yeah. can blame him for being late. Cause if yeah. she, yeah, if she had just been like, no, I have to, I'm not after all of the shit that has happened. I'm not missing this fucking train. Right. He's the wild child. who's saying, come on, we yeah. can do it. We'll make it back. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and it's that kind of stuff. It, it's this very manufactured hand of God type stuff that she has no agency over. Uh, and I, and that stuff is fine to a point, but not when you're literally like breaking the rules of physics well, and, and the yeah, world. breaking the rules of what you've set up. There's, there's yeah. no, yeah. And if they don't do that, a less egregious, but probably same kind of thing is it felt very cliche, but they have to pretend that they're married when they're at this religious person's bed and breakfast uh, for the night. And they have to pretend and they have to call each other honey and darling. And that's where the sort of grotesque uh, kissing scene comes in because. Yeah, that's a perfect example. Like that scene, that weird, gross dinner scene is a very forced hand of God type scene. Yes. Where you've got these two other couples that are just fucking tongue fucking each mm-hmm. other in front of these people being like kiss her <laughs> kiss her come on lady. and i mean it's uh, the fact that they i if if it would have been more acceptable if they if there had been a crab singing a song about <laughs> trying to about it but um it's a very forced interaction and there's no humor in it because it's just gross and weird yeah not to mention the fact before that when the at the dinner thing where he's like oh oh gosh and bigar i'll make dinner um he kills a chicken right in front of her. <laughs> not only is she just kind of like not phased by it, I hope he asked before he did that. Yeah, are these chickens for eating or are they just... Yeah. <laughs> you don't just go to a bed and breakfast and kill someone's chicken and eat it. Well, I, that's the... that's the. Uh, I guess we can move that into a... It's kind of a, a perspective of Ireland. Like the, the, the Irish film mm. critic who I read at the start, right, called this like patronizing filth or whatever. Um... What a bizarre portrayal of Ireland. Like, it, yeah. it's it's 95% old men. There is no technology anywhere. Mm-hmm. Women have to drive, like, six hours to get to Dublin to do their shopping. It's not like they can yeah. go to the grocery store in the town. That's another thing. That's another thing. He, The guy knew she was going to Dublin. Yes, and he didn't do Why it. Why didn't he tell her his wife was going to Dublin? <laughs> Would have made too much sense. She can't have she can't have a, a married couple it's in her like, car with her. Yeah, it's not like th- those aren't things where it's like, ah, oh, damn, you know the luck. It's like fucking no, you're cheating. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, understand, and, and I think it's, I don't know, I, I don't, I'm not Irish. I don't have particularly any feelings one way or the other about Ireland, but I, I think mm. that it's just a, I don't know why. Spoken like a true Englishman. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if I would consider this portrayal offensive as much as it's like, it's bizarre. Like they, they treat Ireland as if they're in the middle of like Afghanistan, like rural Afghanistan. Yeah. There's like no cars. There's no ability to contact anybody. Everything is a pay phone. No one has a cell yeah. phone. It's just pay phones. And her having to get there is just walking down these uh, gravelly roads and no mm-hmm. cars go past and you just have to get there and get going. There's cows everywhere. I mean, it looks like Ireland. If the best thing about the movie is maybe the way that it looks because of the scenery that they're playing with, but yeah, it, it's just a, and the Irish thing, there's nothing particularly Irish about the point of the movie. Like why, I guess superstition, man, the superstition, but is that just supposed to be like a leprechaun kiss me lucky charm pot of gold type thing that it's like, this is an Irish tradition because That's, that seems to be the understanding of their culture. Yes. yes <laughs> right. So why, you know, it's just, it could have been any country. They don't even really take advantage of the Irish factor here, which is really strange yeah. that you're going to set a movie away and you're going to have to travel and film in this location and it doesn't have anything to do with Ireland. Yeah, that <laughs> that superstition could have just as easily been a Detroit superstition. Right, exactly. Um, or Canadian yeah, and superstition as as, just head north yeah. for a couple hours. And as far as the way they present the, the, the Ireland as being basically like this medieval culture that barely has cars, uh, I went to Scotland last year and I was way out on an island in Scotland. Every single bar on the way there and on this island had Wi-Fi, free mm-hmm. Wi-Fi. <laughs> Maybe 2010, it was a different time. I don't know. Well, 
Yeah, you just you just reminded me of the other goofiest hell scene where she she tries to plug in her phone and like destroys the town from, yeah. from plugging her phone in. And um yeah, it's it's just really silly comedy like that. She's trying to plug her phone in and apparently the whole room is just disintegrating around yeah. her and falling it's like, apart. It's like she got off the boat and and walked into straw dogs where it's like 1975 rural Scotland or rural Ireland where everybody is, you know, behind the times for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's really yeah. yeah, it's really and like, I I don't I don't know uh, I am not up on phrases commonly used by Irish people when they talk, but uh, I'm gonna go out on the limb and say if you have a character playing an Irishman, and more than one of his lines of dialogue in, in include the line "tiddly eye," <laughs> I think you're probably doing a caricature. Now, I mean, maybe some of our Irish listeners can hit me to that, but yeah. I, it, see, it seems like he was basically a, go, a green hat away from just playing the front of a box of a Lucky Charms. Yes, I mean, he, he should have been running over rainbows to get her where she needs to go, I think, and getting to the very end yeah. of it. it see, his 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 uh, his uh, approach to playing an Irishman seemed to be to talk quickly and slur his words. <laughs> the actor is Irish, right? Let me look at this. I have to... I don't think so. No, he's English. <laughs> he's English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So not not even Irish actor, Matthew Good. I guess Good isn't a particularly Irish name, but you never know. Um excuse me. Yeah, I don't let's uh let's take a break right now. We'll play a clip and then we'll come back and we'll kind of sort <laughs> yeah, of I need uh, to cool down. Give our fun give our final maybe not final thoughts, but we'll sort of uh break things down after this. So here's a clip. Look what the cat dragged in. Oh my poor dears. You're lucky so you are. Just half an hour ago, I had two backpackers of the door wanting the room. But they weren't married. Admitted it right out. No shame. So I sent them packing. Right is right. Rain or no rain. Mm. So, it's Mr. and Mrs. Oh, Brady. Callahan. Brady Callahan. Oh, Brady Callahan. <laughs> We're not long married, and it's still quite a mouthful for an American. I come from a long, long line of Dingle, or Brady Callahan's. We're praying that one day we'll be able to have a son and heir to help keeping him going. Oh. <laughs> Anna, Declan, to you. Lovely. Now, let's get you to your room. Thank you. After you, Petal. Thank you, sunshine. Would you like a hand with the bag, pumpkin? So now that I think we've um, we've kind of broken down the movie a little bit, we can get into sort of, uh, we've been doing this the whole way through, but just break into sort of like the the, the one-offs that we thought about this. Um, I, I would, uh, listener Kyle had asked us what we thought the, uh, the worst movie we've seen so far doing this little project would be. W- mm. w- do you have an answer for that? Or does this movie like move into your top contender for it? Because I'm... I'm sort of fascinated by the bad movies that we've done yeah. so far. And I think it's, it's at this point, you've almost find archetypes in the bad movies that we can see. Um, do you have any answer off the top of your head as to what you would consider to be the least favorite one that you've seen so far? Um, I mean, Christmas Eve has to be the top, if not right, right around the top. Okay. Um, I saw, I saw you had said a good year. You still think is the worst good year just because of the talent involved is remarkable yeah. to me. How bad it like, I've never heard of this director. Uh, the script is garbage, but a good yeah. year felt like Ridley Scott and Russell Crowe should at least produce a competent movie. And it was yeah. awful. Yeah. I think that's, I, you know, I, I say good year, but I was kind of hesitating to say it because it almost doesn't seem fair because it's not, even even it's not even up to par of the production of this movie of of leap year well i, I would say that good he, good year ironically also has heart to like a good year i feel is trying where leap year and christmas yeah. eve no one is trying in them yeah yeah that's the but, difference you know to me. yeah I, I think leap year is um yeah I, it, it, nobody's nobody's trying but it's still a higher budget production where people should have known better i guess is a good way to put it mm. um yeah a friend of mine this is kind of a non sequitur a little bit, but uh, a friend of mine just sent me a, gr- a fantastic Twitter account, which uh, the name of which I forget, uh, but it is just photographs from uh, movie premieres, uh, which is, it's amazing. Like it's, of the celebrities a, that premieres? Yeah, of the people, the red carpet of, of movie premieres. And um, it really goes to show you how many shitty movies there were that had like premieres where stars came out to see them. Yes. 
And there was one there was one where it was just like some shitty movie and Martin Landau was there and I was like, man, the number of shitty movies this guy must have seen in his life go into these things. <laughs> or anybody. Val Kilmer is at like 50, 50 to 70 percent of them. Yeah. Um and uh I, I was just it's like the pe- a lot of people who make these movies should just like know better, I guess. But I you know, I, I don't wanna Fa- this movie in particular is one of those. Goodyear is one where I think they should have been. It just should have been better. Yes. Um, but this was one where it's like you're really taking a chance signing on to this movie. <laughs> Going like, I hope, I hope I can pull this off. Like, what, what's the, what's the drive other than, oh yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I it's tough because I think about movies like this that have names in them that are just garbage movies. And there's a lot of comedies. It's, it's, it seems to happen a lot in comedy where it's like you get there's got a bunch of people who are good comedic actors and they throw them into a movie and it's just so subpar. Jason Bateman's in a lot of them. Um, Would you say Amy Adams is a good comedic actor actress? Uh, I think she can be. Um, but I, but more more specifically to my point, mm. it's like I I I don't want to fault these people for making the movies that they're making because you know they're still they're they're not like they they, they're still actors they still have to make movies they still got to make money it's what they do um but it's like at a certain point do you know do you know it's not going well and well how do you do do about that how do you read this script and think that this is good i guess right maybe maybe i think that to be fair reading scripts is sometimes harder then the end result comes out like the script is yes. just the, the roadmap. And there's a lot that goes on after the script is done that will produce whether it's a good or bad movie. But like, I would love to read this. It's just not. You, the, I mean, Matthew Good had that interview. He's like, I read the script. and It sucked, but they're going to pay me a lot of money and I'm going to be close to my family. So I'll just do yeah. this as a one off. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think unf- I think unfairly uh in a lot of cases, the people who are in the movies end up being the ones who are like the flag waver for the production. Uh, so if you're in a shitty movie, it people in turn think that you made a shitty movie mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to it's it's really interesting to see where the blame or uh, credit lies as far as movies go. Um, I feel like bad movies a lot of times can end up on the actors. Well, what, and- what's the, what, let's get specific about this. Wh- whose fault is this movie? Uh, I place the blame squarely on the two leads of this. I think the really? direction is fine for what it is. Yeah. Um, I I would go script. You'd go with script. Yeah, because I mean, you can't if if you're if you've got two people who are who are just doing what's on the page, and it's not coming together, then I feel like your problem is more deep seated than the people you hired. My to do my it, response to that would be, if the <clears throat> actors were capable. Uh, and not that these are incapable, but if the actors had tried here, mm-hmm. I would have felt some chemistry between these two. There, this is like a... Do you think this movie would have worked better? Like, if you did the same movie, yeah. same script, same everything, but it was like Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, you think this movie would have worked? I don't think it would have worked. I think it would have been better. Um, yeah, okay. I think, it, I think that... I think a lot of the blame really here lies to the fact that I don't believe these two as a couple. And a lot of that is the script's fault because the script is not doing any help to them whatsoever to get Mm -hmm. them to that point. But, you know, even just those generic rom-com scenes where an actor will do something and you get that look from the other actor or actress who's like looks at them and kind of has that moment where they realize that they kind of have a thing for them, but they want to hide it at that point. You Mm -hmm. know, like the, the slow breaking down of their walls between each other is usually yeah. something that's ripe for the actors and actresses to do it doesn't happen here the, these two are totally dull totally flat and totally zero chemistry between them and yeah. it's, it's interesting like what does it take to have good chemistry between your actor and actress i don't really know what the answer is there but i you kind of know it when you see it and it's just not here yeah. you don't i don't walk away from this movie or when when it was over me and amy just looked at each other and were like why did they fall in love like where yeah. where did the love come from in this story? What did these two have to do, and what is the relationship? Even if they don't have a lot in common, why would these two people, if you assume that they're real people, have anything to do with each other? Yeah, and and <laughs> arguably, do they fall in love? Mm, it's a good because good. I I don't know if you could safely say that that's what happens. I I mean, because outside of the cliche, it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Why does he propose at the end? I could see them being together. 
Um, and then if this was real life, they'd break up six weeks down the line and sort of she'd move back to Boston or whatever. But um, the her, him proposing to her just didn't feel like it was an earned kind of a thing. And I don't know. I mean, I agree that the script is terrible. And I think that the jokes are bad. And I think that it's a tough sell for any actor to do anything. But I, I really felt that the actors here were not invested in what was going on. And it mm-hmm. really kind of hindered especially rom-coms where you just need that from those two. Like you need your actors to at least be trying to do something. Uh, yeah. This didn't really deliver on any of that. Well, you know, I, I think, I think you can see them struggling with the material. Uh, specifically a, a great example of it is that scene where she destroys the room and then he comes up and berates her. Mm. That's supposed, that is supposed to be like a funny sequence. And it is a hundred percent not, and it, and it has it has the it has the effect of like watching somebody bomb on stage <clears throat> when you, they're trying to do all these like funny, uh, oh my god, I can't believe all this stuff is happening in the room, everything's falling over and breaking, but it 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 just seems like floundering, and it's it's not funny at all. And I I would put that kind of stuff more on the, the material than I would on the actors. And as far you know, you're talking about the those those moments where they actually start falling in love and start like looking wistfully at each other and everything <clears throat> i would argue that they didn't those didn't work because they didn't have anything that got them to that point no the bed you know, scene is the, like the only one that i can think yeah, of and, yeah and even that one again it's like it's not they're falling in love it's just that she apparently has not been looked at by another man for the last 4 <laughs> years and he is apparently a, a love monster yes. of some sort which uh, when he gets when he gets to explaining what happened with him and that previous girl, he they he doesn't even explicitly state that they were together. No, he doesn't. He says something along the lines of the the girl that I the girl that I love didn't feel the same about me. So that could mean anything from they were living together and were in a relationship for a long time until his friend stole her or they were just friends and he thought that there was something more there yeah. and she said no. I got the impression and it was just a business arrangement that he started yeah. falling in love with her over, yeah. Yeah, and I, like if that's it, it makes the movie even worse. <laughs> because it's not like it's not like he I mean, I guess he's consistent in that case cuz he gave her a fucking ring. Yeah. And uh uh and he knew her longer than he knew Amy Adams, but even still it wasn't like a, a relationship or anything. Um but yeah, I think it's I think that stuff falls flat. Yes, because the actors can't pull it off, but also because there's nothing there to pull off. That's true. Um, that, that's like true. the scene, like the, the the one that stood out to me was um, the scene where he a- after the bed scene, he makes her breakfast the next day, and then like as he's bringing it up, she she's on the phone talking to uh, Adam Scott. And so he kind of like sheepishly goes back into the kitchen. Yeah, and he, he, he it, hears you know, her the talking kitchen. and yes, it sits down. Yeah, and she's, and she's all like, oh, I can't wait to see you, blah, 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 blah. And so he goes and he brings it back because he doesn't want to, you know, show his feelings or whatever. And then she comes in and she's like, oh, is this for me? And just starts like eating it. And like <laughs> the fact that he made it at all for her should have been something that would register with her. Right, yeah. And... It's those kind of things that just don't land. I mean, maybe that's on her. I don't know. That's on her. I don't know. But it's just those those moments where you're supposed to have these swinging emotions. They just don't exist. That's I was true. thinking about that train scene. Yeah. If going, I think you can fix the train scene if going up to the castle is her idea. So if they get the train tickets and then they sit down and she's like, huh. Okay, I got this train ticket. I got three hours. And then he's like, oh, you're so uptight. Stop being so uptight, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, well, I'm not going to be uptight. Let's go visit that castle. And he's like, well, I don't know. You should probably stay here. You don't want to be uh, so so not uptight that you miss your train and get to see your husband, blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. And then she's like, no, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be not uptight. And then they both go up to the thing. And he's like, I warned you. And then she misses the train. Then it feels, then it works. And then that's a sort of, thing that they can either bond or clash over instead of just the hand of the writer having the train come way fucking ahead schedule. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't, I don't even, I wonder if that would even be too complicated. I would just simplify it by, cause I, I feel that the movie is not defining their characters. So you need him to be the one that wants to go to the castle because he's the sort of like, I'm not the guy who waits around for the train schedule kind of guy. Like I yeah. go off and I have fun. And then if I, I'll come back in time for the train and devil may care, you know, 
I don't, I, I would have fixed the scene by the conductor's like, the train comes in a half an hour. And he's like, hey, it takes 15 minutes to get up to the top. Let's go up see the castle real quick and we'll make it down in time to get the train. Yeah. You know? But the the timing of the two hours doesn't make any sense besides the fact yeah. that it's supposed to be a joke. Um, for the character it's thing... It's still his... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, continue. Well, the, the character thing is that um, Adam Scott, to me, is, a good, is probably the best example of where the character weaknesses come out because... Adam Scott character should be unlikable to make yeah. have this make any sense. And he's not particularly unlikable. He's I wouldn't say he's like a catch or anything, but he's mm. you know, he's a dedicated doctor. He's pleasant to her. They seem to be they're equally bland to the point where I understand why they ended up together in the first place. Mm-hmm. And if he's not a bit of a jerk to her outside of that very ending scene where he wanted to get the apartment, so he told her that they were married and they got proposed anyway. Outside of that. He needs to be really unlikable and driving the audience away from him so that she makes the right choice with Matthew Good's Declan character. Yeah. And yeah. the weakness of the character writing there, and Adam Scott's not a bad actor. Uh, he's weird. He's here. really good. He's really good at playing a shit heel. Yeah. Like that's I guess that's what I was getting at. He's he should be he's a good casting for that character, but the script yeah. doesn't take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you just look at what happens in this movie, Declan treats her way worse than Adam Scott does. Yes, yeah. He does, 100%. And, and, and you're not given a reason as to why she shouldn't be with him outside of the fact that she spent 16 hours with Declan and that's caused her heart to go the other way around because yeah, he's not that bad. Yeah, if you start your movie with your, with your protagonist poo-pooing a set of diamond earrings and then being frustrated because her cardiologist husband has to leave and go save a fucking life. Right. Uh, I feel yeah. like you're starting off on the wrong foot character-wise. Well, here. is the diamond... I mean, the diamond thing is... The the earring thing is funny, because if, if it's trying to portray that she at her heart is not the materialist that he is, and mm-hmm. she is just buying into this sort of status thing, I feel like the... You could have saved that by having the marriage mean something but i don't think i ever get the sense that the character views marriage as anything other than a status arrangement for herself right. like she is yeah she views it as an important thing to do because society is expecting her to be married by now her father and her friend are yeah. both like when the fuck are you gonna yeah. get married and exactly. instead they just portray it as more of a materialistic flaw for her that she doesn't get the materialistic thing that she wants i feel you could have fixed that and had her been more invested in the love aspect of it and the cardiologist is more the materialistic rich doctor prick guy that you'd expect it's it's a generic rom-com setup but it's better than what they ended up with right yeah i mean you know if she had if she had been saying stuff like oh you know i wish i wish we could i was thinking maybe we could go away together blah 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 and he's like no i gotta go to dublin and do you know she's like oh i would love to go to dublin and then he's like no i should really go by myself blah blah you know that that kind of thing where she's actively trying to cultivate the romantic aspect of their of their relationship instead of I mean now now that I'm thinking about it her character is like oddly consistent in that she is manufacturing this unrealistic uh idealist version of what relationship and romance is yeah and she follows that through the entire movie because she dumps her boyfriend and goes and to and agrees to marry this quote unquote romantic other guy that she met. You know, it's like it's a very she's consistent in that her understanding of what romance and love is is very surface level. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So maybe this is a secretly great movie. I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, Amy Adams's character, whose name I cannot remember, and uh, Anne, <laughs> memorable name. Uh, so apologies to anybody named Anne. Open up the name book in the first A letter. He just like yeah. there it is. Anne A. Aronson. Um, apparently, uh, p- possibly Amy Adams's Anne is one of the all time great rom com characters. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think you have time to convince me that this is the uh, the case. But I'll give will, a couple couple more reviews I, unless you have something to say before we well, go to I the just, final thoughts. I did. I did want to say um, that I do identify with her initial travel woes uh, because it was remarkably similar to the time that I had getting from the United States to Scotland when I did go. I can only uh, think of the involved. turbulence. Is there something else that went wrong or just like the sort of, I, I mean, the, the her getting onto a boat, a fisherman's boat was the most bizarre yeah, smash that cut was, that we've ever seen. Yes. Yeah. 
No, it just it, it struck a chord with me where I, what happened when I went was not exactly that, but it involved missing a plane in England and then missing a ferry and then having to find a bed and breakfast to stay at in the middle of nowhere yeah. and then having to rush drive the next day to get to a ferry to take us out to the island. And then coming back, we were going to miss another thing. But, you know, it was, it was one of those kind of, kind of trips. Yeah. So I did identify to, up to a point. Um, and also when we did get to Scotland, we did meet up with a, uh, a very charming Irish man who hung out with us for the rest of the trip. So it was very similar. All worth it. I'll give yeah. a couple of uh, critical reviews and then we'll take a break and play a clip and we'll come back and give our final thoughts. Roger Ebert described this movie as a full bore PG rated sweet rom-com. It sticks to the track, makes all the schedule stops, and bears us triumphantly to the station. What the one, fuck, man? One, one of those Roger Ebert reviews where I don't think he really watched the movie. Cause- <laughs> no. Dude, you know, I respect him to a point, but every now and then I remember he gave the usual suspects zero stars because he didn't understand it. And yep. I was like, fucking. I watched, guess, watched I guess, a lot of movies. He watched a ton of movies. Yeah, you just have to be I guess, wrong. you know, someone, someone who's watched and reviewed as many movies as he has, you come into a movie in the wrong state of mind or the right state of mind yeah. and it you know it could colors everything way. owen gleberman of entertainment weekly gave it a b minus said that the film could have used more pizzazz which is appropriate review i b- think for the movie. yikes a.o scott of the Times said it was so witless charmless and unimaginative that it can be described only as a movie it is can be described as a movie only in a strict strictly technical sense i like that review <laughs> richard <laughs> wrote I like that because it's essentially being like, it is a movie in that it has a beginning and an end, and I saw it in a movie theater. Yes, in that I sat down and watched something on a TV screen screen for two hours. Richard Roper gave it a C-, stating it had a recycled plot, lame sight gags, leprechaun-like stock Irish characters, adding that the charms of Amy Adams rescue Leap Year from truly awful status. Can you believe that they don't say the word leprechaun once in this movie? Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't believe that would like have been it. over the top, right? Well, let's take a break. I'm going to play a clip. It? Me and Clay are going to come back and give our final thoughts about Leap Year. I'm pretty sure she would have been happy with just this apartment. I don't think you needed to propose. Oh, it was kind of a package deal. Really? What, buy an apartment, they throw in a ring? Uh, more like the other way around. What do you mean? Well, I think it was Edith from the board. She called me in Dublin probing about our marital status. Can you believe that? Nothing specific, just interested. You know, like the residents, the kind of old fashioned when it comes to issues like this, blah, blah, blah. I got the message. Married, you're in. Unmarried, you're not. So I just said we were hours away from getting engaged. I just said it and it came out and uh, I don't know where it came from, but I could almost hear them cutting our keys. (laughs) So I put down the phone and thought, well, why the hell not, you know? Really? Sure. I mean, we'd have gotten around to it eventually, right? Right. Yeah. Of course. So we're back into the regular swing of Real Ripe and Real Rotten here with a negative movie, the lowest rated, 23% on Rotten Tomatoes, Leap Year, 2010 Amy Adams film about a woman who goes to Ireland to propose to her boyfriend. And Wait, are we starting over? Are we going to do this whole thing again? So, what, start with the whole podcast? It, so- it sounds like you just went back to the beginning of the show, and I just don't know if I can do this again. We, uh... Well, we recorded it on a leap year, and you can only release podcasts that you did that once every four years. So we have to start this thing over the next I, day. Were you expecting some sort of like supernatural element to come into play? No, I don't think so. No, maybe maybe I'm just you know you just wanted thinking, a leprechaun desperately to to appear in this movie. <laughs> Kinda. I mean, at a certain point, yes. Uh, no, but I I don't know if maybe I was just had leap year and I kept thinking Groundhog Day, but there's oh. some, something about the. The, the uniqueness of the date and like this superstition or, or urban legend, I was expecting some sort of uh, supernatural element maybe, yeah. but that was, those hopes were very quickly dashed. No, <laughs> it's one of the stories, like she keeps going back every leap year and it co- covers like 60 years of her life as she falls yes. in love with this guy or something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, see, that would, see, that would have been a way to end the movie mm. that would have maybe made a little bit of, I mean, it would not have made any more sense, but I mean, like you she, mean she goes back gone. four years later and he's still there yeah, at the she bar goes back four years later <laughs> <laughs> and finds that Declan is married and has like three kids. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's a real bad movie. Uh, I, I, would you, you, you would recommend in the discord people don't watch, or at least they don't spend money on it, which I think is fair, but uh, I don't know if I'd recommend it. I think this movie is borderline so bad. It's good. It's not quite there. I don't know if I'd really recommend watching it. It's very close to being that uh, that heralded it's, distinction. 
uh, it's just so bad. It's, it's bad. Full, it's just, it's so much of that bombing on stage type of slapstick comedy. Like when, when she leans on the car and the car rolls down the hill. Yep. After, after that scene, when the car ends up in the water for like the next 40 minutes of the movie, my girlfriend just kept saying, why did they not call a tow truck for the car yet? It cost too much money. <laughs> it cost too much money. He just gave up on it. He's got to walk. No, I know. It's, it is, it is awful. Also, I will say, even though she would, might have been sleepwalking, hats off to the performance for a, of Amy Adams acting, delivering dialogue, and walking backwards up a hill in those heels. That's true. That's, that's true. the one scene where I was like, holy shit, she's spinning like four plates at the same time, and that's legitimately impressive to yeah, watch. Yeah, I like the direction of that scene. I mean, there's no way you can screw up the scenery of that scene. Uh, yeah. Just put a camera on them. But yeah, she she did she did good there. It's a lot of walking and talking and having dialogue and then trying to not fall on your face with your heels. Let's go to the top of this mountain, and I'll tell you a very, a very specific, <laughs> relatable <laughs> legend perfectly summarizes our situation we find ourselves in. And then, and then when I'm done... You'll say, wait a minute, aren't you just aren't you just stating what's happening in the movie <laughs> right now? <laughs> calling attention to it, which means it's okay for me to write into the script because the other character has called attention to the fact that he's trying, you know, blah, blah. We're going to be returning with Amy Adams for Arrival. <laughs> apologies, apologies for my accent. <laughs> Arrival in a couple of weeks, which is highly rated. I have not seen Arrival yet. Have you seen Arrival? I have not. I'm okay. looking forward to it. Yeah, so it's sci-fi, Amy Adams, and it is gets it good ratings. Is it Boston? Is, is it, it Boston because of the Irish thing? I thought I, I, I thought it was just because it was close to get to. It must be because of the Irish thing, but it's just close to Ireland. Uh, maybe. I, thought. I don't know. Relatively, uh, compared to uh, Los Angeles or something. Tax credits, that's why, even though they didn't shoot in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly did not shoot in Boston. Was, not, a, not a single foot was set foot in, uh, in Boston for the filming of this movie. But yeah, I, I'm very excited for Arrival. I've heard a lot of good things, and I'm... Looking forward to watching another uh, Denny Villanueva movie uh, because they are apparently all really good and make zero money. And I can't wait to uh, see Dune, which I imagine will be the most expensive bomb of the second half of the 20th, second of the 2010s here. The pinnacle, the pinnacle of his career. I'm impressed that he keeps getting money to make these movies. Like, I don't know. Have you seen the cast for Dune? It's amazing. Yeah, so he's I know- putting together this amazing cast. Uh, Hans Zimmer's doing the music, which is going to be good. Uh, it's this massive ad- adaptation that has been tried and not successfully done a couple times before. Uh, and like, he made a fucking amazing Blade Runner movie, and nobody went to see it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how he's going to fa- fare much better with fucking Dune. But uh, you know, well. If you, speed. if you want to hear our coverage of Dune, you can join the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash the Penske file, because we talked about the original Dune or the 86 or whenever it came out uh, by I think uh, it's 84, I think. 84 I think it's by, by Lynch, yeah. uh, David Lynch is directing uh, efforts on that movie. Uh, we'll see if Villanueva can do a little bit better than that. Uh, no disrespect to David Lynch, but Dune is a remarkably terrible movie, but we talked about it on the Patreon. You guys can support the show. There's all the social media links down below. Facebook, Twitter, Discord. Discord is where you can go to talk about it. Uh, Patreon.com slash ThePenskyPal. If you want to support the show a couple dollars a month, you get extra stuff. PayPal link will be down below. There's a Teespring link. Where you can buy sh- uh, t-shirts and cups to help support the show and channel. And I think that's it. Otherwise, just spread the word about the podcast. If anyone wants to know what a movie podcast is that they can listen to, Real Ripe and Real Rotten would be the suggestion. I would Because there are so few of them to there choose are, from. There are. Find a lot of find a thing that you love and stick. Is there to is it. there another realm of podcasting that's even more uh, oversaturated that we could dip our toes into next? Like uh, I don't know, should we do like a politics podcast or Pol- something? Pol- we should do politics, true crime, true crime. Um, well, we got that one covered. That's true. We're, we're, we're a little bit too much of a bent on that, and the, the other one would be like uh, the hell else kind of podcast do I listen to? Yeah, politics would be a good one. What about just like palling around talking about bullshit? Yeah, there's also the the other the uh, a semi popular genre is like the like the one minute heat podcast, which is they look at one minute of heat and talk oh, about it yeah. in each episode. Uh, that's a yeah. very big thing to break stuff down like that. But we'll be moving on. We'll stick to the movies with real ripe and real rotten. Check out all the other shows. There's badass. There is the Radio Star Murders. There's the Star Trek show. All that stuff. 
That's it. We're done. Arrival is next week. Do you have anything you want to say, Clyde, before we sign off? Uh, I got some comics out there. If you want to check out Night Moves from IDW or uh, Poser from Waxworks, uh, yeah, I think you'll dig them. Cool. Guys, leap year. We're done with it. 2010, 23% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not a very good movie. We'll be back with Arrival in a couple weeks. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting the show. And we'll see you next time.